let's fucking see if we can get it with a re reload. Coming to the extreme. We flat out exited the game and we're reloading right now. Uh, these clips are gonna be great. I can't wait to watch them on. Um, I'll probably have to edit them in. <laughs> Talking about even. Um, so here we are. Her Mueller, handsome as ever. Uh, a bit worse of a shot, but uh, you know. Okay, Topi. Okay. Okay, the numerous Topi among the various antelope species. The Topi possesses the highest degree of socialization, often moving in large packs and finding safety in numbers, with, num with several members acting as sentinels for other predators. As, other, uh, as all other herbivores, they prefer to flee rather than fighting. It's highly unlikely, however, that the sentinels can prevent them from being sniped from a helic- Oh, game. How you fuck with me. <sighs> oh. Matthew, are you still there? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go home. Oh shit, I am home already. Never mind. Physically, yes. Spiritually, no. Okay. Let me look. Okay. Okay, modern and swift. Go with it. 48%. North we go. Now that's 51%. The Topies have taken my the last of my soul. Let the hunt commence. Fly high to stay unnoticed. Shoot. You know. I think German soldier left. I think he's done with my with this bullshit. I can't say I blame him honestly anymore. Okay. So let me get this. I think I'm noticing something. What I want? Modern Swift North. So I went modern swift north, right? With that that first. Uh, there goes Madagascar in civil war. This is the heart of darkness. It's dick in my soul. Okay, so. If we go north, we go, and then modern swift, it takes us to 55%. Well, modern swift, then north we go. It takes us to 55%. But look, north we go, 57%. Modern swift, 59%. Let the hunt commence. No noticeable change. Fly high to stay unnoticed, 63%. Shoot. We fucking missed it. You know, I know. There's other fucking things to do in this mod. There's a whole South African civil war that we intervene in. 
And we... There's a risk of Shank rising up here and liberating things for the Angolans, but... <sighs> we gotta... Shank! I just realized it. Why get some fucking amateurs with us when we could bring fucking Shank with us? <laughs> Prepare the hunt. Shank has accepted. The Reich Commissar is birthing with happiness at the news and has merely gone over his personal quarters to clean up his rifles all over again. Sometimes he can be such a child. Still, this is indeed good news. Reich Commissar Shank is Central Africa's only friend, since Sutig is, how to put it politely, a dick. And that's the most polite way he, he can be called. Therefore, keeping good relations with the Southerners can only help the Reich Commissar yet in the long run. Let's be clear. We need two men for this job. Well, two men on top of the the fucking amateurs that we have with us. Thank you, Mr. Rommel. Very nice. Well, let's see how um how the Madagascar and war is going. Uh, not good for the uh republic or for the uh the Jewish movement here. But um good for the Germans, which I guess right now is good for us. I guess. We got the military shot. Oh, we got the um, the Reich Commissariat, which is led by um, Mr. Maurice's uh, Mr. Maurice, who was Hitler's old uh, show four. I think, funnily enough, he's actually Jewish, which is interesting. Um. Shank still cuts something of a dashing figure. Even the airman, the Reich Commissar, kept, keeps his po posture straight and his head held high in a pose that would no doubt have impressed the ladies elsewhere, anywhere, were this not the middle of Central, Central Africa. Mueller walked towards him, beaming, and the two quickly embraced, shaking hands so tightly that only the closest and most skilled of hypothetical observers would notice the clenched teeth. Famili familiarity breeds friendship but it also breeds some measure of contempt. Not that ever, either side would ever admit it. Shank had, has, has prepared a special pistol for the occasion, a gilded one with gold leaf carved by an enterprising native goldsmith, and presents it to Mueller. Smiling as he does so, not to be overdone, Mueller gives something that he's prepared beforehand in return, a fine quality pelt of northern Congo lion skin, rolled up and presented with compliments, a fine exchange, and yet neither leaves quite as happy as they thought they would be. Mueller cannot shoot straight with the pistol at five meters. Shank hit eats fur pelts. Both gift givers knew the other's discomforts with their intended gifts and went ahead anyway. Such is life in Africa. The servants are dismissed and the two prepare for the real business of the day. Shank is the first to get in, somehow managing to clam clamber in and s with style. Mueller, by contrast, tumbles into the cabin, laughing as he does so. The two hold on to whatever they can grab at the airport. Leopold Bill in the Congolese jungles fall away into the d distance, a glimmering sea and of green and white. The hunt has begun. I can't wait to see what happens on this hunt. Okay. <laughs> we trick Shank in, right? We tricked him to come in with us, right? Topi. Take two, boys. 
We got we got another gun. <laughs> it's time to get it. Oh fuck. Let's fly off to the Entomboy Mountains. We only once heard a villager describe him the formation of the Entomboy Mountains in their local mythology. Once a great spirit had ripped up the earth apart in his search for his spouse and dug up the soul of a land in the great mounds. When he found her dead at the side of a stream, in his grief he flattened a massive plateau to serve as a resting place for she and once complained of exhaustion when climbing hills to meet the spirits. The plateau he described now rises before the helicopter, a great flat greenish-brown stretch of land dotted with village smoke and fire of trees. Or, the light of fires. Fire trees. I'm losing my mind. Shank, looking out the window, fancies he can hear the sounds of villagers gossiping and flirting and playing snippets of lives, compressed to a single glance. The mounds of earth, the mountains, now approach the helicopter. Mueller mentioned that he'd known a great hunting spot, although he had kept the specific target mystery is another of Shank's personal flaws. They never bothered to check details with those in confidence with him. As they near the zone slowly, the craft begins to judder. Perhaps that helicopter is showing its age. Mueller, hiding embarrassment, yells at the pilot, who yells back with the familiarity of old friends. Shank has heard the origin story of the mountains, of course, and he thinks it is superstitious not nonsense. However, he cannot help but feel a sense of primal awe at the scale of the mountains he, as he gazes at them, wondering if the infernal crafter of the wild Congo set his paintbrush to run here. Perhaps he is no different from an ape staring into the barrel of a gun, entranced by something he cannot fully understand. Perhaps the villagers here should be noted for further efforts, future efforts. Being inheritors to this wild beauty, he makes a note in his journals and resumes his glance as a craft skips into the curves of mountains with an alien grace. Interesting travel story. But what about the action? It's funny you mention that. Oh! <laughs> the game is bleeding! They're telling me to stop, please. Dog vote, please. It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. Um. The global market, we read it a while back, and we never did it. How unthoughtful of us. Here's some gorillas. The mountains grow from skyline to foreground to background to backdrop in a scene which would no doubt be thrilling if experienced in a movie theater back in the Reich. Shank readies his personal weapon, a rifle drawn from the arm stoke of Winhoek. He's never been one to keep aff uh, affections like firearm service firearms without necessities, primarily because he's afraid that on one of his worst nights he might use it in a fleet fit of peak. He prepares to shoot. Mueller assures him, grinning, that today's target is simple. Gorillas roam this part of a plateau mountain and jungle in packs, and their traces are fairly visible from the air. All they have to do is follow the trail, and the hunt will be theirs. Then Shank is shoved to the open rear doors of a copter. Don't keep watch for these gorillas. Soon he spots what he's looking for. A distinctive trail of crushed branches, tangled vines, imprints on the forest floor heading east. The helicopter swings around and flies over the trail heading east. A pack of small figures comes into view. The copter flies so low over the ground Shank nearly falls over from the turbulence. Thinking about I issuing a formal complaint to Germania about this negligence, he points a rifle, aims and shoots. One figure flies back and the rest disperses. Shank and Mueller take immense joy in chasing them down and hunting the pack. Some escape, but many corpses are thrown to the jungle to rot. It seems the hunt has been successful so far. Despite his best inclination, Shank's excited about it all. Wow. Oh, that is nice. <sighs> Success in a hunt I haven't had in so long. As the helicopter swings in lazy arcs towards the hunting zone, garbled transmissions come through the out onto the airwaves. Trouble, hostile activity, village up, attack, your permission. Mueller puts on a headset and begins barking orders. Shank hides his 
Usman, despite Mueller's complete disinterest in governing, he has a formidable capacity for working on the ground. Perhaps he would have done well as a here officer. Mueller glances at a map pin on the helicopter's side and gestures to a region near the mountains with a cluster of red pins. Rebel activity, perhaps. I didn't set my timer, and I don't want to know how long I've been going. Um, 20, I'll say, we're halfway done. I don't know anymore. Mueller puts down the headset yelling, we're go getting reports of partisan activities near the area, old chap. Listen, I don't want to hit the brakes on our little endeavor, but it looks like this cluster of hostiles might be close to us. It's not like we're going to be use all these shiny new guns on a bunch of rhinos. He looks so giddy, excited. It's hard to imagine he's talking about partisan elimination, not hunting. Shank closes his eyes and tries to ignore the thoughts going through his mind. Memories of swooping fire, of spitting guns, raining hellfire down on little dots that screamed and cried and fell in bloody heaps against a black soil and lay still. He shakes himself to consciousness. Mueller is still there, still waiting for his affirmation. Shank can barely bring himself to nod. The helicopter arc arcs across the green-brown plains towards a cluster of huts on the horizon where cooking fires spring smoke up across the vast skies like the spindly handwriting of children. Oh dear. Up from gorillas to gorillas. It's a nifty, um... It's a nifty spin. Here are the rebels. The long approach from the mountain is hard. Steep winds from the high ground hit the helicopter hard and through the juddering. Shank can barely hear what Mueller is saying to him. Something about the time he nearly blew up a giraffe by pressing the wrong button. Shank has heard too many stories about the lines from along these lines from for Mueller, for Mueller to count. And it seems this one is no different from the others. He focuses his attention on the village below, clustering with people and campfires, but gunfire crackles ominously to the edge of a tree line. Are these people insurgents or just native protection squads? It's difficult to tell. They drop to low altitude and start sweeping the village or encampment. Occasionally a gunshot rings out as some for poor fool with a stolen weapon fires upwards in an attempt to shit the threat away. Mueller yells that they have to move in even closer to dispose of rebels and Shank steers himself. He's no longer at the stage where the sound of loud noises leaves him sh a shivering wreck in the morning. Hopefully it will not return this time. The copter heaves up dust and stray leaves as it swings towards the ground and Mueller, author Mueller authorizes the use of extraordinary force. He whips out the custom rifle, gives a preemptive check, he yells to open the door of the helicopter, leans out and begins shooting. The occasional cry and the grunt of reloading are the only sounds Mueller makes as he aims and fires. Shank somehow drops at the bottom of his, st his stomach. Perhaps it is just his soul, or perhaps he never had one. Then the hunter yells to him, Come, don't just stand there. Join me in clearing this place up. And Shank is dragged to his feet before he can utter a single word of protest. Gun in hand, he follows through with emotions. Aim, shoot, aim, shoot. Aim for that one reaching for his rifle. The one barely older than a boy. And shoot. It's a rough focus. Ah, down and down and down the helicopter descends, down into the black-green depths. Shank gazes calmly at the shrouded figure, dripping blood and viscera, onto the half-painted floor of a copter that had just taken the Reich Commissar Mueller's position. The figure opens its mouth, and out of it comes words, Whoa, are you feeling okay, Shank? Wanna lie down for a bit? I know hunting fresh game can be tiring. Ha ha ha! Appears with shell shock, is back again. Spiraling blades, spinning winds. The wards turn on a dance of endless blood and fire, as, and as Mueller shoots for things, he is swoop shooting morph into little boys and girls in Russian villages. As he swoops on wings of cold metal and hot lead, the figures per burst pop, 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 like little fleshy firecrackers and fall apart like little porcelain. I'm gonna sneeze, goddammit. Little broken por porcelain dolls like Moody had used to give at Christmas. How raspberryish! How long had it been since he had tasted raspberries? But not like that, surely. Is there blood on his hands or is it just the wrath of his country on his back? 
Is there a difference? He barely hears a panic shout. Oh, it's, what are you doing, Shank? I like the trees too, but the insurgents have all gone. Don't make me fill up another ammo quest form, damn you. Finally, this world comes back into focus and Reich Commissar Shank sticks his, sticks his head out the helicopter and wretches. He can barely bring himself to stand and stagger back to his seat. Jesus, that was a bad episode. Huh. Siegfried Mueller gazes at a shaking wretch where once lay a Reich Commissar. Shank's eyes are dilated and his hands are trembling. Mueller wonders if he's suffering from the same type of glazed eye shock that old Heinrich used morphine to cope with. He's never the same after that incident with the elephant and the patrol squad. Either way, Mueller can tell what a man is beaten, and Shank sure as hell beaten. Perhaps a hunt should be called off. He asks if Shank wants to continue with the trip. Below him, the ruined village... Sprawls bloated and thick with fumes. It appears that they hit a few of the fuel tanks on approach, and some of the uh, figures running from the scene are luminescent, haloed with gasoline flame. Shank gazes at the scene and says nothing. His hands, however, revealed from the gaping mouth, cannot. Mueller shakes his head and calls for a chopper to head back to the base. Maybe another time, friend. Shame you couldn't be a stronger hunter. Corner of his mind thinks that the problem lies with their medical care. Perhaps the partisans have poisoned the medical supply. Certainly the Reich has decreed that only bed rest is necessary for recovery from shell shock. And why would Germania give false instructions to its jungle garrison? Huh. At least it's over. Well, such dire times as these given within the German administered sections of Africa. It is rare that we receive good mu news regarding our fight against the victorious savage partisans. However, one such notification did recently reach the desk of the Reich Commissar. Apparently that the famed partisan and terrorist Mobutu Sese Seko has been spotted near Bangui in the northeast of the colony. Born Joseph Desiree Mobutu, Sese Seko was joined the Central African SS at an early age and quickly earned a reputation for his intelligence, leadership, and fervor. Mobutu seemed destined to rise, as his race would permit him, until he unexpectedly vanished into the jungle along with his entire unit and a vast quantity of arms and ammunition. Shortly after, he changed his name and developed an, in, a different reputation, one of the most ruthless and capable insurgent warlords in the region. While many of his rebels proclaim allegiance to Bolshevism, democracy, one of the many pithy ethnic groups perpetually squabbling for prominence, Mobutu appears to fight only for himself. His fighters are famed for their greed and steal whatever they can find from German colonists and native Africans alike. Many of our best men have been hunting Mobutu for months. That he has been spotted at last suggests that, we can, that the ground might finally be shrinking beneath his feet. We can only hope that this dire threat to our interest will finally be eliminated. <sighs> God, I need a... I think I'm... Ah. This fucking Topi is beating me down. Well, there goes the uh, Jews. It's all up to the Republic. <laughs> To have uh, some sort of a uh, light in this horrible, horrible place of darkness. Uh, fingers crossed. All right. Well, every client is welcome. Reich Commissariat Central Africa is more like it's like most Reich Commissariats. And that is an economic playground for the mega corporations of the Third Reich. The resources of the Congo are brought up and shipped back to the Vaterland, Fatherland. I'll just say that, providing a steady stream of material for the industry, for the hungry industries of Germany. Simons, Reichsfreche, IG Farben, and Daimler Benz are here. Yes, and so are NSU and Volkswagen. But they aren't the only kids in the sandbox, and that makes Central Africa unique. 
for there is a lot of home homegrown Belgian industry here as well. Mines and plantations at Mueller had decided not to take away from their rightful owners. They deal for Germans on equal footing, and if the Germans try to force them into bad deal, well, Yasuda, Mitsui, Mitsubishi, and Sumitomo are here as well. They could put in a bid. So can many minor Zaibatsus and Karitsus. Yen is just as good as the Reichmark, and the dollar is just as good but here as well. If Britain is a, is a back going to the Reich, we are in the dark alley where, where the deals with the Americans are really made. A U.S. flagged vessel can strike their flag and tie up right next to a German naval vessel in any one of Central Africa's harbors and expect service equivalent to any other client. And a client can be anyone from anywhere if they have the cash to back it up. Central Africa is truly the last free market on earth, a place where anyone may pull up and purchase a good for a fair price. All they ask is a bit of digression on the part of the client. The client pays very well and on time. Cash rules everything around us. Will we get some more money? And with that, let's get some let's get some oil, some aluminum, some aluminum. Steel. Um, tungsten. Let's get all of this. Fuck it. <sighs> Let me think. Unexpected outcome. After long, Shank has been strange. He hurried out of the helicopter, merely flew back to Winhoek, and hasn't been in contact ever since. Miller isn't sure what could have caused this behavior. Perhaps one of his officers had been disrespectful towards him, or there was something off about, about the food. The Rush Commissar has sent a letter to his colleague, asking for forgiveness, whatever it was, whatever it was, and the reply has been curt but polite, saying that everything was well. But Fairport Miller has been dereplicated, has dereplicated as a misunderstanding, but there are so many things he doesn't understand. I don't understand anything either, Mueller. If it makes you feel any better, I'm... I'm... Shiza. I'm just... I've been drained. Mueller, like most seasoned hunters, is just sociopathic enough to dismiss sight which would shake most lesser men to their boots. And certainly an episode well regrettable is nothing Mueller has not seen before. Poor Heinrich never quite recovered, which is a shame because the fellow was such a good shot with a Mauser. And so the precise reason for unease is lost from the Reich Commissar as he flies back to Leopoldville. After all, and after he returns, and he had to persist like a particularly vile particle of food stuck beneath the tooth. He wonders again if a problem is with the medical supply. He orders the existing cache Case of medicine checked, their staff and personnel profiled, and all suspicious personnel to be fired and terminated. And yet something r remains amiss. And if it's suspicion, he orders the refiling of all personnel suffering from similar illnesses and reads, reads them himself. Truly commendable for a generally ill-lettered man, tossing them to his medical staff with orders for new remedies. And yet the rotten... Little unease persists. He writes a little Shank asking if the man is alright. He gets a frigid response and a cool affirmation that Shank is alright. Thank you for asking. And would you kindly please stop sending messages through this channel? Thankfully, Mueller is just dense enough to interpret the, it as a friendly message and drops the matter. If Shank is well, then so is Mueller. Perhaps in time, he might even recover enough to go on another partisan hunt. But how could it have come to this? <sighs> you know what? We need a real fucking sociopath in order to go after the Topi. I think it's time we ask Hans. Since the hunting expedition with Schenk has gone wrong, the Reich Commissar wants to begin a new one, this time inviting his other colleague, Hans Hutig. Of course, everyone knows what the answer will be, but he wants to try anyway. Let's just hope this reply isn't as hard as the last one. That time, Mueller pinned the wall letter to the wall and threw knives at it until the wall was a colander. Painting the room once was already costly enough.
Sherman's fucking dead still. I'm sorry, little guy. Huh. Take, take some water, buddy. Take, take some water. Rip Sherman, he's a real one. Oh, real shit. A faulty investment. Yeah, you know what? Fuck the investors. I really don't care. Unless they can give me... I'll go a little longer on this video. Unless they can give me... Promise me a fucking... Topi on a silver platter. I don't give a shit. I don't. <sighs> Topi is truly an animal of my nightmares. Ah, oh, God. Rash Kamazar, Siegfried Mueller, lay on his back and is comfortably cool off, is picking his fingernails with a knife. So fucking hot, he thought. But not worse than yesterday. Glad to have nightmares about Toby's tonight. Dude, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna have to go to therapy for this. I'm gonna have to call fucking Kevin. He got up and went to get himself a drink before heaving himself into a chair on his balcony. Bloody maintenance. His favorite helicopter was done with for the week. It just wouldn't start. There's always the smaller one for a clo closer game. So Zayz had reminded him to hell with that. Boring beyond belief. He'd shot in range of that old piece of junk. Mueller had told them to focus on their jobs of administrating the colony and leave the real work of hunting to him. Just as it, his feet of the, of the parapet took the first refreshing sip of ice cold drink, he had an idea. Damn me for this thought, he got up, but damn me for not thinking about it earlier. He went to the typewriter. I am bloody here for this. Hands, my arrogant colleague. We are in this together. The fear wants us to cooperate, but you here, you are the obstacle here, not Wolfgang and I. Despite his thoughts, he began to let it with the same politeness as he often displayed in his formal invitations. But his snide commentary continued, if only for his own enjoyment. You're a different caliber, Hans. But I've hunt I've hunted wars. You have a damn big territory. How could you how could you neglect its, its splendor? Let me incite a bit of passion in you. Mueller knew this letter would likely not amount to nothing. He had nothing better to do, though. So why not bother with doing what he was here for? This seemed the best way to cooperate with his joint Reich commissars to make Afghan integral part of the Reich. Strictly business. Hunt it. Hut. Hut it. I think it's hu Hutig. They mean to say, not hunting. Hutig would like that phrasing. There would have to be no problem getting Wolfgang Schenk, his old friend, to tag along. Now there was a man who understood how to assert German dominance. One way or the other, the names need time. This loss, if he says no, I'm just doing my job here, Hans. Mueller roared with laughter as he wrote the letter. Hans, we should really all be friends here and find our peace. I'm doing you a favor, after all, trying to end your self po oh, oh, the isolation. What? All of Germania thinks you're useless, you old grump. Oh. Alright. I think we're going to end it soon, but before we do that... Once more into the fray. I feel like Winston Churchill. We shall never surrender, no matter the price may be. Oh. Pinned to the wall of his much too cramped and hot office was a letter of Siegfried Mueller's fellow Reich Commissar Hans Hutig. Mueller enjoyed real mood despite the letter's contents. Threw knives at it from behind his desk. What am I to do with you, Hans? Mueller laughed. A hit, directly splitting the letter ineptitude in two. 
Well, Hans, you call me. You can call me everything you want while I pick up the fruits of labor. So much for your rant about my incapability. Incap Another hit, directly splitting a whole sentence. Now it reads, while you're working, instead of while you're hunting, I am working. I give you that. I like hunting, but which man of common intellect wouldn't use his opportunities I have? Alas, for you, my work is praised nonetheless, not yours. I was about to integrate you. I wanted to make friends, but I came to a conclusion you earned your shame, Hans. You can't even handle uprisings! Another hit, tearing the in two, for a man with your ruthlessness, Hans. I thought you might want to be graced by glory as well. Mueller picked up the letter, examining closely. What is it, it shunning you? My African Asari? Did I say sorry? Ascari? Maybe. The hunt? Everyone likes hunts. Shank? No, he's a nice person. Too nice. Me? My temper can be ambivalent, my mother used to tell me. My special game? Ha! <laughs> that definitely doesn't shun you, ruthless bastard. Fuck you, Hans! You're a mystery, that's right. Fuck you, Hans! Mueller exclaimed light lightheartedly. Is there currently no no one special I haven't hunted before with? He went to the balcony, gazing at the track vanishing in the wilderness. Red sand, dream, dreamfully moved by a breeze. Madagascar, bloody Maurice. Of course, he has some special creatures over there. I can invite him seeing mine. Um, I don't think Maurice is doing too hot right now. I think he's getting murdered. I can invite him seeing mine. Huta can't stand him, so double fuck him. He went to for the typewriter, realizing realization suddenly flooding him. He's too much too far away. Besides, I heard this tro troublesome reporters of his populace. And reportedly, Garrison, he gave it up. He took a cold drink and went back to the balcony. Damn, I need something to do. Get my bloody helicopter back on. Alright. One last time, boys. Once more into the fray. The equipment. What do we want? We want modern and swift. We do not want modern and swift. But you know what? North we go. The hunt is ready. Let it commence. Please, God, let it be over with. Fly high. And now the odds are at 57%. Okay. Shoot. Clip that Matthew, we can't. We can't let this all work all this hard work go. Forgot and be forgotten. The bullet hit Mueller's Toby directly under the neck. You fucker! A stream of blood poured the poor thing seemingly dry. It collapsed soon thereafter in a puddle of what once kept it alive. The Toby laid still while the others were jumping hurriedly over its dead body, desperately trying to escape. In the end, only three managed to, you fuckers! The others were done with the green, by the green hunting boys. He promised himself to congratulate their officers and rather tense teenagers that had to do their sorry service to the Reich down here into a rowdy celebration. They approached the dead animals on the ground. Step after step, Mueller's grin widened. Barely a meter apart from his prime target, Mueller was so happy that he promised a bout of alcoholics in his private chamber. What? A bout of alcoholics? Does that make sense? He had slain a mo or impros of Topi before in the year before his first impro a visit to Wolfgang Schenk, but he yeah, hadn't cared about some trophy collection for a greater cause back then. He only started to, progre to with progressing age. Mueller allowed the hunting youngsters to 
cut out trophy pieces of their own from the trophy shot. He only cared about this one and began the journey to acquiring the beautiful head as his trophy. Then he did his promise. <sighs> oh my god. I think I fucking came. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Victory Royale. Sherman? I'm sorry, buddy. Can you forgive me? He's kind of nodding his head. He forgives me. His ghost forgives me. We're... Go I've just gone so insane. I'm talking to a fucking stuffed animal. I need a cigarette. Oh, I don't even smoke, but I need a fucking cigarette. Um. Let's. There it lay, still bloody horns, yet be still bloody yet beautiful. Mila rested sands on one of the Topi's horns. He liked the feeling of a ripped coronet structured on its skins. Slow Shortly, those filigree and elegant horns would embellish the halls of his trophy room. He waited while the responsible concierges, concierges were informed. He looked at the collection and found the perfect positioning for this beauty. The Reich Commissar crossed his arms and proudly co contemplated his work. He'd slain the Scottish beast. He laughed at how impressive something similar to those critters could be in his eyes. What a story to tell. No one could flee it now with the filigree Topi's head begging to have its story told. The fine look reminded him of how many of Africa's finest creatures he'd already encountered and how many of the palace's visitors will soon encounter. But now he had to give out some drinks. Look at that cunt. Smug fucking nose. His horns. Those like look like the fucking devil horns. You know, we, we, we did a fucking service. Killing that fucker. We really did. Ah. <sighs> well... I hope you know I'm taking gonna take that clip and change the background up to something funny. Please do. Please do. You know what? Send it to me. I'll post it on YouTube, or post it on your old channel, and I'll, I'll re-upload and give you a shout out. I don't care anymore. All I all I care about is that we got this fucker. Ah. Fuck you, bitch. You broke my heart. And fuck your friends for tearing us apart. Ah. Oh. You know what? We have to end... We have to end it here. It's 11 p.m. anyway. We've spent probably two hours with some gaps in between trying to kill this fucking topi. Oh. Alright. I'm gonna stop recording.